It's great. We do love our new location. It's very groovy here at the Friday matinee here on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS. I'm T. I'm George. Yes, happy we Friday. Just, and we're in a new, we're, we've been here for a while. It's not so new to us. Ju- end of June-ish. Yeah. Although it's coming together nicely, isn't it? You it know, it is nice. Indoor plumbing and everything. That's a... That's an awesome thing. This is the Friday matinee, and uh, it's the day before Halloween. Yeah, and it's been in already. The I'm dressed day, as the a weird harried, harried uh, <laughs> person is what I am. The best I could do was my Halloween sweater, my ugly Halloween sweater. So, uh, But, you know, Halloween coming and going, other stuff coming up. Oh, my gosh. November 1st is here already. The fall, We fall back an hour, so make sure you change your clocks on things like your microwave and your stove and, and the I things that don't change themselves. I have to remember every six months how to change the clock on my car. And I usually have to dig out the um, yeah the the, um, the dig book out the manual. But for some people, George, this is a really good time to schedule something with them. And if you don't tell them to change their clock, they'll actually be It'll on be time. Early. I Margie, like that. Margie, <laughs> I'm just going to leave the clocks anywhere. But. Uh, uh, you know, that being said, I know as I actually interviewed um, one of the candidates this morning for the Hart School District, and he's like, yeah, it's the, you know, the first week of November. And I'm like, yeah, so, wait a minute, that's, that's coming next up. week. So and there's some up. fun stuff in addition to, you know, looking at the calendar, what's coming down the pipe. So, uh, have you been out to Rancho Camulos? Well, you know, this is the thing I was going to say. We think that we've got some history because where we're sitting, this street actually Old kind Town, of... New all, Hall. Our, Originally, maybe 1880s ish started kind of mm-hmm. formulating, although yeah. it's moved and they triangulated. But uh, Rancho Camul- Camulos, thank you, Rancho Camulos. has actually been around even longer. And that is on the 126, is a historic, it's a historic landmark, correct? And uh, it's it's a great opportunity to go out and, and see some California history. And there is some really fun events coming up at Rancho Camulos Nat- National History. Historic landmark coming up Saturday, November seventh. There's a Ramona movie night. Okay, this is very nice because the Ramona silent movies made there. They're going to have the film historian discussion. I did this last year, George. It was one of the most fun evenings of my existence. I had the best time. This is the viewing of the 1910 Mary Pickford classic and the only remaining segment of the lost 1916 Ada Gleason epic, which was also filmed at Casita Springs. With us today, we have some ladies who are here on behalf of Rancho Camillos, and we're going to allow them to kind of give us all the the specifics. Maria Christopher, would you in- introduce everyone? Hi, uh, I'm Maria Christopher, and I'm a docent at Rancho Camulos Museum and National Historic Landmark, and with me today, I have uh, Sue DeSesso. Hi, Sue. Hello. And Mary Helen Miller. Hi, Mary Helen. And the audience goes wild. Yay! <laughs> and of course, we're here to t- today to talk about our November 7th and 8th events. Uh, I, as you said, you were there last year for our Ramona movie night. Oh which my featured gosh, it was so Dolores fabulous. The Dolores Del Rio 1928 movie. But the film was beautiful, but the idea that you had the, the, the film historian that came and told the stories and, and really got in, and then the panel discussion, it was... It was quite the event and delicious food and Mm -hmm. beverages, I might add. Well, uh, we're going to outdo last year. (gasps) What? Oh, I'm going to mark my calendar right now. Well, first of all, we are going to have the dinner, a dinner in the uh, in the candlelit 1839. Excuse me, 1852 Adobe. I'm, wow. getting, I'm getting my dates mixed 39, up. 3952. Would you have noticed, yeah. George? Yeah. And, and, and really, <laughs> I guess one of the, for those who don't know Rancho Camulos, Rancho Camulos is what remains of the original Mexican land grant that once included all of Santa Clarita. So it's like the this, birthplace of Santa Clarita. This main street belonged to the Del Valle family. <laughs> yes, so it did. that was right. way, way back. All the magic okay. starts mm-hmm. there. And That's the right. sweet spot. And remaining at that location, which is a National Historic Landmark, is an 1853 adobe, a chapel from the 1860s, uh, a, a winery, now abandoned, unfortunately, but we're hoping to restore it, and various other buildings, as well as the newest building on the property is a 1930 schoolhouse. Oh, wow. Modern, modern uh, building. Right. Modern and, building. And it's a national historic landmark because of its role in California history, but also because it's acknowledged as the home of Ramona, hmm. which was a novel written in 1884 by Helen Hunt Jackson to call attention to the mistreatment of Native Americans, particularly by the government. However, what it did was, in addition to 
causing some legislation, resulting in some legislation, it caused the first tourism boom in California. So hence, the the Rancho has this living legend and is part of the the history of Rancho Camillo's is the fact that being the location, one of the locations in the book, it has been involved in many degrees with the movies that were spawned from the book. But getting back to the specifics of November 7th, that, as T said, is going to feature the movies, the Ramona movies, that were actually made at Rancho Camulos. This 1910 Mary Pickford, the sweetheart of America. Well, that would have been one of her earliest films. Yes, that's it was. She started. Yes, she was a, a young teenager, and um, the, that movie itself is only 11 minutes long, and it's awesome. But back then, that was an epic in 1910. That was, uh, you know. Yep. <laughs> it was hard to, hard to pull all that yes. together. Yeah. It, it's been remastered, and uh, the, the they've Term, you know, expanded, and so now it's actually 17 whole minutes. Oh. But it's it's a fascinating thing to see because you look at that and you see what happened, what the place looked like 100 years ago, and it hasn't changed. It's the same. It looks the same. And you but know what's nice is you talked about it was one of really the, sort of the first tourist spots because mm -hmm. travelers would come to see this because of the book and because mm -hmm. of the things that happened. And there really is sort of a magical element of hospitality at Rancho Camulos that exists mm -hmm. all the time. It's it's it is. The, the buildings, the way it's situated there, right off of the 126, it, it lends itself. It, it really, truly welcomes you. It's a, it's a great facility. And speaking of hospitality and that evening performance, we'll talk about the program a little more, but I would like Mary Ellen to, to, Mary Helen to tell you about the, the dinner and the wine and that aspect of it. Uh, yes, we are going to plan to have a wonderful dinner just like last year, catered by the same people as um, did last year. And as you know, T, was it, was it was really excellent. However, this year is even more special as, as our wine is um, from Carmel Village, um, Valley up near um, Padre... Junipero Serra's um, birthplace, or where he's actually buried. And um, there's a family boutique wine called Cima Colina, which means hilltop in, in Spanish. And they are redoing some of the wines that were first planted um, in from the 19th century. Oh my gosh. So um, <laughs> This is exciting. It mm -hmm. really is exciting. And um, Boutique winery. A boutique winery. And so that will be um, in the 1953 um, Adobe that was original. Um, and it will all be lit up by candlelights throughout the whole thing. And that will be the d dinner buffet with the wine and the candlelight. And we are really looking forward to this. And it all this. starts at 5.30 on November mm -hmm. 7th. Exactly. Now, to get tickets, it would be best to secure them in advance so that you have a head yes. count, I'm sure. Reservations are required. It is a fundraiser, so the price is $50 per person. And that $50 includes museum membership. So it's kind oh. of and it's so oh. worth it. I have yeah. to tell you, even if you pay the fifty dollars mm -hmm. for the night, yeah, I mean you're getting a, a wonderful membership mm -hmm. to to the organization. Mm -hmm. But it's worth it for the night. It's such mm -hmm. a beautiful event that you put on. Yeah, and the program. Uh, we talked about the 1910 movie, but we also have the clip from the lost 1916 movie. The 1916 movie starred Ada Gleason. It was there's different. No matter where you, depending on where you read, it was from eight to twelve reels. There's different sides deciding on it. It was three hours long. It had a full orchestra. It had a full orchestra. It uh, they had it supplemented by live stage scenes. Etc. And all that's lost except for 11 minutes. Of it, it seems wow. to be a theme because last year your film was found that it was Der Nazi Germany yeah. had somehow. Yeah, that's the Dolores Del Rio, right? Ramona, and we're going to be showing it on Sunday. Yes, so we'll and talk so about that, in a few that was yeah. that was actually very very. Uh, it was a lovely event, but yeah, lost is kind of a, a ongoing theme mm -hmm. with these films. Yeah. Somebody might want to start going over the property with a. Uh, <laughs> 
What's that? That uh, metal? Counter. Yeah, the, the metal detector. I, I have a feeling there's probably more there. Since yeah. I wish, I wish they were found at Richard There's no Willis, coincidence. But unfortunately, they find us. <laughs> All right. So then, speaking of the film I, I just mentioned, Sunday, November eighth, from twelve to four, uh, this is Rancho Camulos days, where you can actually experience rancho life. You get to see historical presentations, interesting exhibits, and the 1910 Ramona movie tours, children's activities, learning about the regional museums, and history related groups, food for purchase, truly fun for all, and only a $5 donation. Mm -hmm. So if you're not able to come to the glorious event the night before, you have a really full and delicious day for only $5. And children 12 and under are free. And if you have kids born in California, you're going to want to take them to this. There's a sense of pride. There really truly is. Being a Californian, being a Southern Californian, being someone from the Santa Clarita Valley to be mm -hmm. to go and, and literally touch history. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great opportunity. And then the 3.30, uh, Dolores Del Rio recently recovered. This was last year this this all came about. Restored. It's 80 minutes. This was, a, again, a lost 1928 Ramona silent movie shown and discussed. Now, last year you had a harpist mm -hmm. that played uh, during the silent film. Okay. And this year? Well, Javier, we hope, will be back with us, but he has Javier, not been able to. Javier, I know you're to. listening. You're Maybe. going to be there. <laughs> Please, there. Javier, come back to it us. Was, it was but, lovely. But on both Saturday and Sunday, you mentioned the how impressed you were with the historians. Well, Hugh Monroe Neely is going to be there this year. He's the one that was involved in finding the films. He's he's done this year he's done several trips to Europe on behalf of Library of Congress doing finding more movies and, I love and making relationships. But Didier Delizer will be there, Phil Burgandy, who I think you met last year. And one of the very special guests on Friday on excuse me, on Saturday night is for this 1916 movie, they went on location and set up, some of it was done at Rancho Camulos, but a good deal of it was done in Santa Barbara and at Casitas Springs in Ventura County and other locations in Ventura County. And the granddaughter of the family where these people set up for three months is going to be at the event. She's brought family artifacts, um, insights into the movie making process at that time just it's just going to be and an, an the historians for both saturday and sunday will knock you over <laughs> and, really and this woman is named um, Patricia Clark Derner. And what was interesting when we met her was she pulled out some postcards that her grandparents had sent to them on their honeymoon oh. visiting Rancho Camulos oh. on their honeymoon as a tourist destination. And this was like this was like when the automobiles were first starting and mm -hmm. people were taking these little road trips and what a glorious stretch of highway that 126 still is. I can only imagine what it was back in the day mm -hmm. with, you know, the mm -hmm. the uh, agriculture and, and just that beautiful open highway. Oh, how, how fun. It was very fun. I think it was, she said 1905. I could be wrong on that, but it was around the turn of the century, and this was a destination for this couple on their honeymoon, which I found absolutely fascinating. It was like the Disneyland of the early 20th century. Right, mm -hmm. right. And it was, they took the train, you know, that was was a very common thing for them to take the train and there was a train stop that actually stopped over there so that people could get off at Rancho Camulos and go and visit. Yeah, uh, that, at that time, whether you were in a wagon, a buckboard, or even an early automobile, the roads were not as uh, No, and get me out of this moving vehicle as, they as soon as nowadays. possible. Was one bumping along at, Any bumping place along was about Nirvana. 15, 20 miles per hour. <laughs> but this is fascinating. I find this uh, Rancho Camulos uh, very fascinating. I'm always corrected every year when, I, when you come to thank you for that. But uh, um, because of the fact that uh, 1852, 1853, aside from the missions, uh, uh, it's one of the at least oldest buildings that we have, and, mm -hmm. and actually not just buildings, but the, the entire place mm -hmm. uh, that we have in, in California that is still around. Yes, it and, is. And especially in, in light of um, what it, it shows from the old historic period mm -hmm. and what it's, it's like. It's like stepping back in time. It truly exactly. is. And and as a native Californian, when I traveled to Europe, I, I thought, oh my gosh, look at the history these people have. Look what they... And I thought, what do, what do we have? And we do have places mm -hmm. like Rancho Camulos because we can go and touch our own mm -hmm. history. There aren't a ton of places, but the ones we have are absolutely beautiful, and it's mm -hmm. a testimony to the family that that's a very well-built uh, uh, 
um, as what they've done there mm -hmm. with the way buildings are kind of temporary in California. Mm -hmm. That that that's not the case here. Yeah, they survived, built quite uh, a lovely yeah, quite facility. Quite a few earthquakes and everything else. <laughs> yeah, it was exactly. severely damaged in the Northridge earthquake, right. and actually that's where the museum got its start. People came in and Actual said, museum. "We have to we have to preserve this place." Right. And so they got involved in the effort and the restoration effort continues. But you and that's why we need fundraisers that's like right. now, Mary, you have some information on the family, correct? Is with the, about uh, the property, the, uh, Del Valle, sorry, the Del Valle uh, family. Del Valle family. Yeah. Pardon yeah. me, yes. Yeah, um, right. Um, what we will have is we'll have reenactments with uh, uh, docents in costume, and uh, they are going to give the history of the ranch. They'll be uh, in uh, on the South Veranda and in the the big adobe, and they'll be telling about how the ranch started, how it was originally a land grant back in 1839 to the Del Valle family, and uh, this is the surviving part. And it'll talk about uh, the son Ignacio, who ended up with that portion of the ranch, and uh, how his wife uh, uh, wanted a religious thing, so she had the chapel built in. Uh, I think it was 1850 something. It was their own little city. Almost. Yeah, it yeah, was. It was, it was, they were self-sustaining, self and right. I mean, they grew what they ate. They made what they mm -hmm. needed. Right. Exactly, and there will be there'll be uh, children's activities there. You'll be making bricks. There'll be tortilla making. Uh, just all kinds of things I to do. I taken the, my kids earlier. We could mm -hmm. have had a separate building on our property. We Look, could've. we learned to make bricks at Rancho <laughs> Camillo's. Right. And, and they'll just get be, on that get stone matate, right. kids. Let's go. <laughs> and if you go, you go into the chapel, you'll see senor, the senora. She will give a reenactment, and she will tell mm -hmm. about the life that she had in uh, mm -hmm. uh, on the ranch. And uh, our actress is excellent. <laughs> so, it's any, a, anybody it's, we know? Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Dorothea Phelan. Oh, okay. Dorothea, I yeah, and we Dorothea. also have another one, uh, Susie, uh, who was Javantino's uh, wife, and he was the illegitimate son. Uh-oh. <laughs> Every family has well, one. So we'll, all, we'll go into the history of the, the true <laughs> history of the Del Valle. But really, the Del Valles were the movers and shakers Absolutely. in what eventually became uh, L.A. County and the Santa Clarita area mm -hmm. for, for a lengthy period. They held on to the property until 1924. Wow. So whereas most of the ranches disappeared when the Dons died in 1880. Right. But this family persevered. It's, it's a fast, the whole history of the family is fascinating. They're, they created, um, they established the winery, vineyards, et cetera. First, it was the uh, most highly rated, if, if you will, wine in what was then part of Santa Barbara County hmm. and brandy that came from the Rancho Camulos and What about winery. the oranges? <laughs> and the first citrus in the area and the first commercial olive oil. Mm -hmm. And the in the early 1900s, the uh, largest pomegranate production These are all my in the, favorite in, foods in, showing in, up in, in the, the United Camulos. States. They were the people who first started promoting pomegranates for health. Hmm. Of course, hmm. they didn't make the millions on it that Palm did. <laughs> right, and that so came later. Yeah. That came later. But yeah. but the idea that they they really made everything they possibly could of this magical spot in the valley, mm -hmm. and and it and it was it was it's fertile ground, and and they they were visionaries for mm -hmm. for their time period, and yes. and holding on to the property that long was really it, mm -hmm. it, it was quite a it was an achievement. it was it was an achievement, and they did have to sell off parts of the property and this is what's left of it because the and how much is actually left again 1800 acres so, yeah. are is the whole rancho the uh, museum is actually a 40 acre section of it and really operating the operations for the museum currently are only on the 10 acres but uh, the historic building but surrounded by the beautiful yeah you know, you're absolutely the, you're transported when you come and last year when I came for the for the evening for the Ramona movie night uh, when you come into that property you truly feel like First of all, there there's not a lot going on. There's not a lot of hubbub near the Rancho Camulos. So you you feel 
like you're actually coming to visit someone's home. Mm -hmm. You come, you park, it's it's very sedate, it's very, there's, there's just a lovely quiet to mm -hmm. the area. And then when you're actually inside the property and you're doing what you're doing, there's, there's a, um, you actually feel like you're taken back in time. Mm -hmm. In a way you are. So I mean, it's, it is a, a going back in time. So ranchocamulos.com, C-A-M-U-L-O-S.org. Blessing, begging your pardon. RanchoCamulos.org, Saturday, November 7th, 5.30 p.m., Ramona Movie Night. And that is a, uh, a fundraiser, candlelight tours, dinner buffet, wine included, advanced reservations required. $50 donation includes museum membership. Very awesome. Sunday is Ramona or Rancho Camulos Days with the uh, historic 1910 Ramona movie. And is that when the 1928 one is going to be shown as well? At 3.30. Yes. At 3.30, that special showing of Dolores Del Rio. Uh, it's a for, great the, movie. for the public. Rancho Camulos, located on Highway 126, two miles east of Piru, 10 miles west of the I 5, Santa Clarita New Hall Ranch Road. Very easy to find. Thank you so much for coming out. We really Thank appreciate this. Thank you for this. having You're us. Welcome. Very excited. And we hope to see you there. <laughs> right. well, we will be back with more. This is the Friday Matinee on your hometown station, AM 1220 KHTS.